right, snow is flying outside in today's podcast. We're going to be talking about what's coming up for summer and how we are going to get ready for the homesteading season. This yes. is my mother, Carrie Butler, and we are going to talk about what kind of plants and what kind of plans that we have for this upcoming summer season. Hi, welcome everyone. So thankful that you can join us today. And yes, we are thinking summer thoughts, even though we look outside and there's snow. But there are big things to come this summer because I, as well as Tyler and our family, are attempting to improve our green thumbs. So we are going to learn and grow together. I know one thing, at attempting a small box garden the last few years, I learned some valuable lessons, and I also had some time to talk to God, and he just really imparted some great lessons because I learn in parables, I read the word, and I see things in parables, I like to teach in parables. So having a garden in the homestead life really connects for me when yeah. I'm learning. So there's something that the Lord is famous for, and his parable about a seed and life and what it takes to grow the seed and how the seed falls onto where it's going to grow and whether that seed grows up to be a good fruit or a bad fruit. There is hundreds of verses in the Bible. It's probably the most used parable in the entire Bible, both by our, the Messiah, Jesus, and by the Father himself, God the Father. And I just want to kick things off real quick. Um, you guys will see it on your screens here, but this is Genesis 22. And it says, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of along the same premise of when people really aren't close to God or they never really thought about it. And they find themselves in the country and they look up and they just start thinking about things that aren't on the top of their head. They're not, you know, in their daily lives questioning how that all got there. And I really like that verse because it, it takes you to that kind of place in your walk and in your faith. I'm most excited about the vegetables because I don't know about you guys, but every time I go to Meyer or Walmart or Aldi's or any place and I try to get produce, there's either a wax coating on it or it's genetically modified or it's just not natural. It's just massively pimped out, overproduced and manufactured with the wrong intentions. And things are so flip-flop this day and age, Mom. How in the world are we eating produce out of the grocery stores that are doing more harm than good? You know, I think about my grandpa, uh, Fred. He had 13 brothers and sisters. And he used to tell lots of tales about their day was about producing food. He would talk about his sisters and his mom. They would just peel potatoes all morning just for dinner. So... I think a lot of this, too, is getting back to your roots of how much working for your food. There's something about getting your hands dirty and working the ground, and you learn so many lessons. I know for me, last year's garden <laughs> was a train wreck. <laughs> yeah. So gardens <laughs> take commitment, and I put so much work into it in the beginning. You know, I thought, okay, we're going to plant these seeds. We're going to have these these luscious tomatoes, and guess what I did? I did not put in the commitment of daily weeding. And we were overrun by weeds because of my neglect. So that is a lesson all of in itself, really. Yeah, and that's one thing that I really like about the garden is that it will teach you biblical truths just by doing the act itself. There's not too much in the world. I mean, maybe raising, raising children, you could say something about that. I can't yet, um, hopefully in the future. But there's also just different inherent benefits to all of this that modern science is starting to unco uncover. Yeah. Um, for example, there's a thing called grounding, and I don't know how much truth to this there is or not, but just so you guys are aware, um, if you are to go outside during the spring, summertime, and just take off your socks and shoes and just walk around, there's electromagnetic forces that interact with your energy and your life force and it's supposed to improve your immunity and your immune system and benefit you in a lot of microcosmic ways that end up being macrocosmic in the end because it's kind of about the little things and that's biblical as well you know the more little things that you can work on and that you can improve and that you can introduce into your day-to-day -day, um, the better your overall is going to be in the long run 
Yeah, I think um, getting back to your roots, just going back to natural ways, and I think that there's a lot of lessons to be learned from the way things were done before things got really commercialized. Yeah. If you just took a few moments to read the labels on just what was on your lotion or your shampoo or, like Tyler said, your your vegetables, look at the labels that's on your food. A lot of it's not even food. It's just processed junk. So small changes, small steps over time. We have to take care of our temples. And I think as we grow, not only with the fruit of the Spirit, we also need to have attention to our temples because as we take care of those, we're going to feel better. We're going to have joy. We're going to have peace when we're in alignment with taking care of our physical temple along with our spiritual lives. We will truly be growing in unity. And I think when either one is out of balance, it really has an impact on your life. And that's kind of where I'm at. I'm 45 years old, and I'm feeling the effects of not taking care of my temple very well. So for me, this is a journey of taking care of my temple, getting back to my roots, trying to get back to natural living. Uh, we are uh, experimenting with tinctures right now. I'm really a big fan of oil of oregano. It's oh, yeah. One of the most powerful antibiotics that you can get from nature. So we're just going to explore and, and look for natural, pure ways to get back to root. It's one of the most powerful flavors of all time, too. If you guys haven't tried that, oh my gosh, it'll punch you right in your mouth box. That's fire cider. Oil of oregano tastes like a dressing. Well, I'll tell you what. We'll put a little bit of biblical truth in here. (laughs) Um, We've got Leviticus 26.5 and 2 Samuel 7.10. Um, your threshing season will overlap with the grape harvest and your grape harvest will overlap with the season of planting grain. So um, that is just kind of a way to derive multiple plants are going in the ground this summer. We're going to try and completely eradicate relying on grocery stores. And uh, 2 Samuel 7.10 says, And I will provide a homeland for my people, Israel, planting them in a secure place where they will never be disturbed. So, there's there's just a bunch of ways that the Lord likes to use the analogy of putting something in the ground, adding life to it, watching it come up, and having that kind of give life in itself. And then it's just, it never ends. Um, let's just do a rapid fire. Mom, we'll go back and forth, and we'll just tell them like, what we're all doing. So I'll do a few, and then you can do a few. But okay. I'm planning on planting a um, field, a deer garden, basically, for crops. It's going to have wheat and cabbage and carrots and corn. And I'm going to end up setting a blind out at some point and harvesting some venison that this whole entire family, and I don't single know a single person that doesn't like venison. But what are some things that you're going to do, Mom? I'm really looking forward to getting into different medicinal herbs and planting some different herbs and making some tinctures and maybe some uh, salves and different things to treat things medicinally. I also am really looking forward to canning this year. So that's kind of a something that I've always wanted to do but never had the effort or the drive to do it. But this year, I really want to uh, start canning and start preserving and, and really just not having to go to the grocery store as often this year. That's a goal. Yep. So some other things that we're going to be doing, I'm going to try and be building a outdoor greenhouse so I can continue the growing process into the winter time. I'm also going to be planting spices and herb gardens for dill and peppers and all sorts of things like cilantro. And just so you guys know, I do own and operate a business called North Fresh Farms. Um, I will put the link in the description so you guys can check that out. And um, that's a place where I offer the local chefs around here in the restaurants fresh produce that's locally grown in the Gaylord ground. And um, we're gonna be trying to expand that. We've got chickens as well, so we've got the eggs taken care of. And we're just going to be making a huge effort when it gets warm outside. I wish you guys could see it right now. It is just blustering outside. The snowflakes are falling magnificently. Yes. And I'm also really excited to bring each and every one of you on our journey because I'm sure there will be some bloopers and blunders. I would look forward to tips that you guys might have (laughs) that you can give us 
Because honestly, we're talking, you know how they talk about couch 5K programs? This is like couch to gardening program. So you guys can laugh along the way with me and we're gonna learn and grow. And you know, that's the number one thing that I'm learning is you just have to start. Yeah, just that's start. The most important and guess thing. what? You're gonna make mistakes and you're gonna learn from them and you just keep trying. You, you fall down, you dust yourself off, you get back up and get back in there. So I'm excited to see each season how we're going to grow, not only in our garden and in all the plants we have, especially with your North Fresh Farm, but also spiritually. I do want to share one scripture, which is 2 Corinthians 9, 10. It says, for God is the one who provides seed for the farmer and then bread to eat. In the same way, he will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. I encourage you to continue on reading, but I really like that verse because God is the one who provides the seed, and then the farmer produces the bread. So it's kind of like you do reap what you sow. Yeah, absolutely. I also like 1 Corinthians fifteen thirty seven, and what you put in the ground is not the plant that will grow, but only a bare seed of wheat or whatever you are planting. So to take that in the context of what we're trying to do, guys, you probably aren't going to be going outside this summer and just expecting the world to happen right in front of you in one season. It's kind of the parable of life. It's not the plant that you're planting. It's the seed that turns into the plant. And it's that process which is so intimate and mystical and of God because somewhere in that process, life occurs. And that's what we're all about here at Growing Fruition Podcast. So thank you guys for tuning in. Yes. Um, we are looking forward to multiple videos a week and we're having um, guests on. So if you guys, anybody that you know wants to be on the podcast, want to sit right here in this spot and just talk about whatever we want to talk about, leave a comment in the description, hit the notification bell, subscribe and drop a like. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to pray with you. Feel free to message us. Drop prayer in the comments. We would be happy to speak with you, pray with you. And our heart is to serve you and to help you grow in your fruition. Hallelujah. We'll see you guys next week.